If you're not careful, you live in a constant state of anxiety. On the edge, worried about stuff. My biggest regret at 55 is all the things I worried about between 25 and 55. 85% of them never happen. But it doesn't matter that it doesn't happen if it steals your joy, if it robs you of your peace, if it stops you from celebrating the moments that God has given you. Because some people can't enjoy where they are from worrying about where they're going. It might be dark for you right now, but it's not over. You might be going through a season of the absence of a thing that you legitimately need, but it ain't over. You may have to function for a while without the absence of the thing you adore, but it's not over. You might have to go up without what your neighbors have, but it's not over. For somebody struggling just to keep your head above water, you're smiling just to keep from crying. You're doing the best you can, but you put one foot forward and two steps are made back. You're trying, but things don't seem to be quite working out the way you planned. You thought you'd be in a different place at this season in your life. You're doing everything right, but you're still suffering. You see, to be anxious is to have anxiety over a threat that has not been executed. Just worried about stuff that hadn't that, that hadn't happened. I'm under threat and life is a threat. Full of threats. Life is a fight for territory. And once you start fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. To really be able to to persevere in times of trial and fire it difficult. I'm telling you right now, if you are going to birth your dream, your passion, and the second half of your life, you can't draw back when life gets tough. You've got to stand up to it and push. We have a thousand reasons every day to have anxiety. The psychologist says, that anxiety is like a pilot flying a plane, looking at all of the various gauges on uh, before him and not understanding that the gauges are incorrect. It makes you think that you're flying lower than you are, that you're closer to destruction than you are, and you're reacting to the gauges as if you were about to crash, never realizing that anxiety breaks your gauges and you cannot trust your own senses you can't trust your gauges but you will get there you may go through some stuff but you will get there you may be betrayed but you will get there you may even be delayed but you will get there. Life is difficult, and a resilient person is capable of standing up to things in the face of fear and moving forward voluntarily, convinced of their own competence and ability to prevail. But not enough people are willing to build that mental, emotional toughness, and the moment they do, they'll, they'll persevere. You face yourself you realize you want to be better. You realize you don't want to be this weak, insecure person in the world who has all these problems that we all have. We all have. Spend time with yourself. Trust me. And once you find that passion and that purpose, your goals, your purpose, everything will just start lining up. And then you'll find the courage to start that journey from that 20 to 100. Zig said most people in a fearful situation they forget everything and run. But there are a small number, the road to life is straight and narrow, a few there be that find it, who face everything and rise. He said if the dream is big enough, 
the odds don't matter. And so when you say dream big, that's major. One, there's power and pursuit. Because as Jim Rowan said, it's not the accomplishment of the goal that matters. It's what you become in pursuit of the dream in the process. Because when you have a big dream, it will introduce you to a part of yourself that you don't know right now, that you will never discover in your comfort zone. Because in order to achieve that dream, you've got to die to who you are now. I must die daily. You must die to who you are now to give birth to who you ought to become. I believe that all of us have stories of greatness. When trials and difficulties come, when, when your health starts to fail, when your children break your heart, when persecution comes just because you're trying to do the right thing, when difficulties, tough times, hard days, long nights, it is then that your faith kicks in to let you know that he's a very present help Everything starts out good. And as long as it stays good, you don't know what you got. You don't know what you can do. You don't know what you can stand. You can't rely on a fair weather relationship. You don't even know who you married to until all hell breaks you. When the lightning is flashing and the thunder is raging and we're downsizing and we got to move into what looks like a closet, you don't know what you got till the storm breaks loose. It is the storm that defines character. It is how we react to the crisis that proves the depths of our relationship. If you just keep up your defense, you may rock a little bit. You may shake a little bit. You may have to buckle up. But you will get through this. But if you forsake the posture of protection and panic up under the threat of assault, then the enemy gets territory that he would never have because you relinquish your position. There's something that you could do that you could think in your life that would radically change your life. Somebody could take the hand you've been dealt and win with it. Same circumstances, same ideas. They would do it through what they thought about your life. But we don't need somebody because we got you. Discipline requires that you hold your position even when you're over five. You can't speak peace outwardly if you have turmoil inwardly. If as long as you got peace on the inside, hell can be breaking loose on the outside. And you can speak out what you hold in. The worst storm in the world is not the one on the outside, but when it gets on the inside, you cannot speak what you do not have. A ship never goes down because the water is around it. It doesn't matter how much water is around it. It was designed to sail on top of the water. And as long as the storm is on the outside, the ship can sail through anything. Don't look at it and say, why me? Look at it and say, why not you? and just get up and put one foot in front of the other and use your situation to add value to the world. The quicker you shift your perspective to add value to the world, the quicker you'll get your situation and your circumstance. Learn how to handle the winters. Just the winters of the calendar in the last 12 years, how many winters? About 12. But it's not just the winters of the calendar, it's not just the winters of the season. There's all kinds of winters. The winter when you have all kinds of hecklers on a telephone call. The winter when you can't figure it out, the winter when it all goes wrong, right? The winter when you get that first half dozen refunds. The winters of your life, social winters, political winters that we're going through around the world. The economic winters that a lot of people are experiencing these days. Personal winters when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long. 
It is simply called winter time. But here's what you've got to do in your own personal development, your own personal growth, and that is just get better at handling the winters. You can't change the winter, you can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. Never say, I don't know what it is that I got. What's most important, commit thy works until the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit yourself to do that which is in your heart. You were not born to work for a living but to live your making, and living your making will make your living. We get paid to work on a job. That's what we get paid for. But your calling is something you're made for. What is it that you would do free? Something that you love it so much, you do it for free, and you do it so well, that people will pay you to do it. That's your dream. That's your superpower. You can get wiser and stronger and better. Wiser, stronger, better. Go home smarter than you came. Go home with more ideas than you came with. Next, get stronger. You can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the inspiration muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There isn't anybody here that can't get stronger. Next time we see you, may not even recognize you. How strong you're going to be able to become in language, in style, in personality, the ability to cope, the ability to handle with anything that happens, no matter what happens. And the third one is get better. We can all get better. I've gotten better. First talk I gave, I stood up. My mind sat back down. But here's the secret to my success. I stood up and did it again. I stood up and I did it again. And I did it again, and I did it again all those many years ago. I did it when I was scared, and I did it when I didn't want to, and I did it when I was ill. And I did it when it didn't work well, and I didn't did it when they didn't appreciate it. I just did it anyway. And now all these years later, I got better. I got better day by day, and week by week, and month by month. And I'm asking you to do the same thing until you can develop a long arm and a long reach. Until you can develop influence that won't quit. Touch people next year you couldn't touch this year. Touch people now you couldn't touch before. Conduct a meeting now you couldn't conduct before. Heart and soul now mixed in there that wasn't there, missing before. I'm asking all of you to get better in spite of the winter, in spite of the downturn. The money downturn, the social downturn, the personal downturn, whatever it is. Just get stronger. Get better. We've all got those personal winters. We know what those are like. Barbara Streisand sings, it used to be so natural to talk about forever, but Used to bees don't count anymore. They just lay on the floor till we sweep them away. You don't sing me love songs. You don't say you need me. And you don't bring me flowers anymore. A winter song. But hey, we're acquainted with all those personal winters, all the rest of it. The key is not to wish for a better winter. The key is to wish for more strength, more wisdom, more courage, get better, get wiser, get stronger. And, and, and do that. Because if it's something that resonates with you, it's something that's in your heart, where your heart is, there your treasure is also. Remember A.L. Williams said, all you can do is all you can do. And all you can do is enough. But make sure you do all you can do. We always go all in on something that we love. What's in your heart? Because where your heart is, there your treasure is also. In my book, I say, live a heart-centered life. So as long as peace guards your heart and your mind, your life can go through anything. As long as you don't get so caught up in your swing, in your business, in your dream, in your hope, in your potentials, that you drop your car. Stand right still, steady yourself, take control of the situation. No matter what you read, or what you heard, or what they say, or what they do, don't drop your car. You can make it through anything as long as you don't drop your guard. Here's scripture. Here's what he said. I fought a good fight. 
me that extraordinary to be able to say, I fought for my kids and I fought for what was right. And I fought for my good health. And I fought to protect my company. And I fought for a good career that would bless my family. I fought a good fight. It's good to fight. The encroachment. Opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. And if you want something valuable, you got to fight for it. Then this writer also said, not only have I fought a good fight, and I'll finish with this, and I got a much longer list, but maybe I can cover these at another time. He said, I fought a good fight, and I kept the faith. See, that's the deal. Keep faith with your family. Fight like crazy and keep faith. Fight the enemy and keep faith. Fight illness and keep faith. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. I fought a good fight. I fought for my kids and I fought for what was right. And I fought for my good health. And I fought for a good career that would bless my family. I fought a good fight. The encroachment. Opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. And if you want something valuable, you got to fight for it. If you get beat, unless you're dead, you are not defeated. And you have not failed. What you've done is you've learned. You've gained experience. And you're still alive. So get up and go get after it. Not only have I fought a good fight, I fought a good fight and I kept the faith. See, that's the deal. Keep faith with your family. Fight like crazy and keep faith. Fight the enemy and keep faith. You have comeback power. When something happens to you, don't buy into what has happened to you. Buy into, I'm getting up out of here. I'm going to change this situation. This does not work for me. And I don't have the luxury of being depressed. I need to clear my head. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your story doesn't end in the night. The night is temporary. Don't get discouraged. It's just a night season. It's not permanent. It's not how your story ends. You may not see anything happening. Keep moving forward in faith. Keep believing. It's just a matter of time before the morning breaks forth. But let me tell you what ought to cause great joy to come to your life is if you'd stop comparing yourself to other people and you would just remember where you came from and remember where you started. You're doing more. You're seeing more. You're achieving more. But if you start comparing yourself with someone else, you can get discouraged because they're doing more maybe than you're doing. You have a great life in front of you. But your great life is in front of you. It's not behind you. What you did back there ain't got nothing to do with what God got for you. What you did back there was learn the lessons to get you to where you are at this particular moment right here. If you have enough reasons, you can do the most incredible things. Here's what you might be lacking, a long enough list of reasons. Reasons that drive you, reasons that get you up a little extra early, reasons that keep you up a little extra late. Reasons, that's what makes the difference. I fought one hell of a fight. Are there any fighters in here? 
I mean, I fought such a good fight that when I look at what other people call a fight, what they call a fight is what I call normal. I fought my way up. I fought to get to work. I fought to stand. I fought to carry on. I fought to live. I fought to get out of the bed. I fought with my fears, my anxieties, my insecurities. I fought with haters, liars, backbiters, and betrayers. And many times I laid in the bed. I couldn't go to sleep because I was fighting with myself. I fought. Take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Don't hide your delicate pride from the truth. Take ownership of everything in your world, the good and the bad. Everyone took ownership of their mistakes. Everyone took ownership of the problems. Take ownership of your job. Of your future and take ownership of your life and lead lead yourself and your team and the people in your life lead them all to victory make your move before you're ready we're in, instructed in life to walk by faith and not by sight see you want to really begin to stretch yourself you want to become a risk taker most people won't do that See, most people engage in low life living, low risk living. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you can't be happy. Then what else is there? Anybody who's not ever willing to risk will never do very much in this world. And in all probability, you'll end up being quite bored with your life. A couple things that I said last night that I don't want you to forget is walking by faith is taking step one before you know what step two is. After a few times, you get a little more used to it and it's not quite as scary, but taking a step of faith is stepping out to do something when you don't know how it will be provided for, but you believe with all your heart that it's what God has told you to do. Life is short and unpredictable. And so you want to begin to take some chances. You want to begin to challenge yourself and make it okay to fail and learn from your failures. Don't allow fear of failure to draw you in. You can't get out of life alive. You've got to die to leave here. You got to make changes. You got to say no. You got to disappoint people. You got to walk away from some stuff. You have to. And so stepping away from things has felt much more dangerous to me than taking on five new things. Did anybody get it? Anybody out there you get it? Trying to learn early the consequences of errors in judgment, poor behavior, and then try to learn from others that have gone down a, a disastrous road and sure enough they suffered the consequences and you say wow then I'm gonna change direction because I don't want those consequences that's called being doubly smart learning from errors in judgment a few simple disciplines practice every day now you're on the road to success a few errors in judgment repeated and you can turn anything around once you see that you're suffering either early consequences or severe consequences, all you have to do now is shut down that route, pick another destination and start going that way with some easy disciplines that day by day gather momentum and now one success leads to another leads to another. Here's what we call that, disciplines, easy disciplines. All disciplines affect each other. Every discipline affects the rest, every lack of discipline affects the rest. What's interesting about success is starting a new discipline, a couple of new disciplines, and sure enough, once you've gained just a little bit of success in a couple of new disciplines, it'll inspire you to clean up the rest. It'll inspire you to fine tune all of your other disciplines. Each lack of discipline affects the rest. Solving problems, going from errors in judgment to easy disciplines that can change it all. And if you start that journey, it doesn't take long for new signs of success to appear. I got such great results that first year that I made these incredible changes, learning extra skills, putting together extra disciplines, working harder on myself than on my job. The early signs of the fact that I was going to arrive at a more positive destination, I was hooked. It didn't take but a few months, less than a year, and I was hooked for life.
so when you begin to say what is it that I want to lead what contribution that I want to begin to make what difference do I want to make in life what is it that I want to do with the rest of the life that I have left what chances I need to take what risk do I need to begin to embrace what fears do I need to step on what areas of my life am I dead right now what dream you can either live your dreams or live your fears you have got to get to a point where you say I'm sick and tired of living like this there's got to be more that's see that's when people go out and, and strike out on their dreams that's when people get out of relationships where they're dying together rather than growing together See, you will when you put yourself in that kind of situation. I'm reminded of, of two frogs that, that were hopping down the road and they fell into a bottle of milk. And one was hopping up and down for a while and he drowned. He just gave up. But this other frog just kept on kicking. He wouldn't give up. He just kept on kicking. And pretty soon he churned that milk into butter and he walked on out. I ask you to start that same journey. Let your new skills, new disciplines affect all of the rest. You really won't be happy if you don't produce. Six-sevenths of our life was to be devoted to labor and work, to produce, to produce a work of art, to produce a good family, to produce an enterprise. That's the essence of life in its best form first, is to be a producer. What is the reason for the seed and the soil and the sunshine and the rain and the seasons of life and its miracle? What's the reason for all of that? Here it is in a nutshell for your notes. To see what you can do with it. We've got books to read and we've got classes to attend and we've got, you know, things to do and things to learn. And if you put it all together, you can have not only your health, but your fortune. You know, why not see what you can do with what you've been handed? As basic as seed and soil and sunshine and rain. Here's what all of us have the miracle and it's almost godlike in its potential. The ability to recreate. Only God can create the sunshine, the rain, the seasons, the miracle of life. But here's what humans can do. Recreate those components into a harvest. By planting the seed, reaping the rewards in the harvest. We call that recreation to recreate, to take your hours and your energy and your life and a bit of skill and create, actually recreate a career, a future, possibilities, fortune, recreate. And that changed my life. It was Oliver Wendell Holmes who said that once a person's mind is expanded with an idea, it can never be satisfied to going back to where it was. So some of you are going to experience a breakthrough. Some of you are going to go back and look at your dreams and brush them off. Whatever goal that you have in mind, I want that to be a goal that will challenge you. Something that will make you stretch. It was Osborne who said, unless you attempt to do something beyond that which you've already mastered, you will never grow. What is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it? That you talk yourself out of it? Whatever it is, bring it back out there. How are you going to do it? That will come to you in due time. See, you don't get in life what you want, ladies and gentlemen. You get in life what you are, not what you want. See, the good news is that we can always become more by working to develop ourselves. You've got to begin to take a look at your life and look at where are you right now? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What gives your life a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy? What does a full, rich life means to you? What is it that you could love doing seven days a week? Think about that. That takes an incredible psychology. But in that psychology, we bump onto limits, and that's what you gotta shift. And if your psychology is solid, then you gotta say, where are the skills I'm missing? Because that's equally important. And you won't be happy if you aren't really extending yourself. Because here's really the goal of the human adventure. The full development of all your potential. Why not see how far you can go, how much you can earn, how much you can share, how much you can give. Why not see what all you could be? That's why at my age I'm still working, traveling the world, doing what I've done for all these years. Is to see what else I can become. How much stronger could I become? How much more refined could I be in my working with business partners and all the rest? Why not go for that ultimate challenge on and on as far as you can take it as far as you can. Friendship is one of the greatest support systems in the world. Nourish it, protect it, look after it, develop it to the best of your ability. Next is your heritage. Keep your heritage alive. That's what's made America great. 
is a combination of a variety of heritages from all over the world. People have been coming from all the countries of the world to America, bringing with them their gifts. Gift of business ethics, gift of government, gift of music. In order to develop and to change and to grow, stress is necessary. So you got to be willing to go get it every day. There's a story my father told me all the time. He said every morning on the plains of the eastern Serengeti Desert, there arises a gazelle that realizes that he was run faster than the fastest lion, or he will be eaten and he will die that day. On that same desert, arises in the morning a lion that realizes that he must run faster than the fastest gazelle or he will starve and he will die that day. He say, son, the moral of the story is no matter who you is, when you wake up in the morning, you need to be running. And so what he taught me was a work ethic of, of how to work in order to get to where you want to go. You got to put yourself under some stress though. See, stress is necessary. See, but a seed has to be planted. A seed got to have dirt put on top of it. But guess what? Logically, in my mind, it doesn't make sense that to grow something, you should dig a hole, put it down in there, and cover it with dirt. Logically, that don't make no sense to me. But oh, though. See, dirt is necessary. Yeah for growth and development. Yeah. Dirt builds character. Yeah. Dirt gives you the push through factor. Yeah. Dirt makes you come yeah. with it when you don't feel like coming with it no more. And you get dirt in a lot of different ways. All of y'all that had dirt thrown on you. And dirt ain't always what you want. It's somebody talking about you down on your job. It's somebody accusing you of something that you didn't do. It's somebody telling you you ain't gonna make it. It's somebody sharing information about you that ain't true. Everybody get dirt put on them. But see, when you getting put under that stress, see that dirt builds character in you. When they talking about you, it teaches you to withstand it. Then it gives you something to push through. So when you put the seed and you put the dirt on it, if you understand stress, stress really ain't just dirt. See, they don't call it dirt when they plant it. They call it soil. Because see, soil has nutrients in it. When people are talking about you, dogging you, lying on you, stealing from you, talking about you, they're actually putting nutrients in you. They're building character. You got character now. And now the seed, if they put a camera under the ground, you'd have seen the seed sprout open and start coming through the dirt because the dirt is necessary so you can prove yourself. Everything you see above ground that blossoms and plants and grows and that's beautiful, it was underground one time. All them potatoes, collard greens, they was underground one time. Them apple trees, they was underground one time. So they had to prove themselves. See, you want to be successful, well then you got to prove yourself. You got to push through the dirt. You got to come up through here. You got to come out. Then you sprout and then bishops say, then you become a tree. Next thing you know, you got fruit. So when you under stress, take the stress for what it is. Don't get fooled. Don't just think, I don't know, man, Lord must not mean for it to be. What you tripping for? What you talking about? How you think you're going to be a plant, a tree, and ain't no stress? How you going to get to be that without no dirt? See, I expect dirt now. I expect people to talk about me. Matter of fact, I look forward to it now. Do your thing, because if I can weather what happened to me and my family earlier, you can bring whatever you got now. There's some more stuff going around now that's about to happen. The next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that some of you already know that it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. It was hard when just over three years ago, in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, where I was operating my business. And I fell on some hard times. And I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming into the lobby. And the security said, excuse me, Mr. Brown, can we see you for a moment? And I said, yes. And I walked up to the counter, and he gave me an envelope. And he said, would you mind reading it here? And I opened the envelope, 
and the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. It's not a hotel. Please do not sleep in your office. And I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I just work long hours in creating my business. I'm an entrepreneur. And right now things are bad for me, but they're not going to be this way always. And I just asked for the opportunity to continue to operate like I'm doing. I'm not trying to make this my home. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. And look at him. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs on the 21st floor. He sleeps on the floor. Him and two other dreamers up there. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. And I was facing financial difficulties in my own life. I was behind on my bills and my dreams, and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal a rock from anybody. Why did this have to happen to me? It was very hard. And here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream, that one day I would have my own talk show. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor. Never knowing my mother or father, it's a long shot. Being here with you today in this dome in Atlanta, it's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded, but I kept running toward my dream. It's very important as you hold on to that dream, there are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to know that. Don't say I'm having a bad day. Say I'm having a character building day. Failure, hell, disappointment, discomfort is a great learning tool. And many people don't understand that. You, you, you got to take ownership of what's going on in your life. If you're not where you want to be and you say it's because the boss doesn't like you or it's because the girl treated you this way or the guy did this, like all those things, you got to take ownership of it. And if you're blaming uh, all these other external things, you're not going to make any changes and that's going to be a problem. Wishing says to your mind, you haven't got a prayer, but you might as well wish. So when you say to the mind, I wish I could, it says, yeah, me too, get over it. When other people break and give up and stop, I just don't, right? And it comes down to the story you tell yourself about yourself. Change is really hard. I don't think people realize how hard it is because often when they think of change, they think about making positive changes. And so you say to people, well, obviously making that change would, would improve your life. So why is it so hard to do? And the reason is because first of all, change is hard because change involves loss. So even though you might be moving to something better, what you do lose is you lose the familiar. You lose your comfort zone. And a lot of us are very worried about going into a place of uncertainty, a place that we haven't been before. So some of us, like sort of human nature, would rather stay in the familiar place, even if the familiar is miserable or unpleasant, than to say, I'm going to risk something and go to this place that makes me really uncomfortable. They can't tolerate the discomfort of the uncertainty. The things I do in life, most of life, you're alone. You may have a whole support group around you, but up here, you're alone. Most of the stuff I do, I'm training for that one, those moments. When you start to dive back in the cellar of your mind, and you're pulling out all these, all these tactics, all these mental tactics to get through this, and no one's coming to save you, and you get through that. When you have a dream, and the dream 
isn't something you dream and then it happens. The dream is something you never knew was going to come into your life. Dreams always come from behind you, not, not right between your eyes. It speaks up on you. But when you have a dream, it doesn't often come at you screaming in your face, this is who you are, this is what you must be for the rest of your life. Sometimes a dream almost whispers. And I've always said to my kids, the hardest thing to listen to, your instincts, your human personal intuition, always whispers, it never shouts. Very hard to hear. So you have to, every day of your lives, be ready to hear what whispers in your ear, it very rarely shouts. There is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. I feel so strongly that the reason I'm here is I dream big dreams. I dream the kind of dreams that other people said would not be possible. And anyone in this country, if you dream big and surround yourself with great people and leave your ego at the door and share success with others and have a little luck along the way, you can do anything. But there will be people along the way who will say to you, you know, you're dreaming too big. It's not possible. Those things just can't happen. Don't allow anyone to tell you that what you are dreaming is not possible. It is possible. Don't be one of those people 20 years from now are going to be walking around in a 9 to 5 job, miserable and angry and bitter. The people who dream and those people who dream big have a different kind of life than the people who don't dream. If you do not do what you're doing right now well, your goal is just going to be a fancy desire, isn't it? Whether it's fear or anxiety, whatever it may be, I believe that every single person who's going out to chase their dreams has those voices in their head. I think it's part of the human experience. Stay strong, have faith, keep pushing through. I've said this before and, and the living proof of it is that on the other side of your struggle is something good. On your other side of your struggle is something better. On the other side of your struggle is some sort of success. So I'm here to tell you today that you can have anything you want, be anyone you want, but you're gonna have to work. See, dreams, aspirations, they're not easily obtained, but one of the hardest things to do is to keep going, is to keep chasing. You don't realize your dreams are so important because your DNA, who you are as a person, is wrapped up in your dream. Go after this thing called life. Don't look back and have regrets. Understand that you're at a place and a position right now when hard work and valuing people, nothing can stop you, I promise you. We all have things that we're believing for, dreams that we want to accomplish, problems we're hoping will turn around. Maybe it's to see our family restored, to lose some weight, to break an addiction, to start our own business. But sometimes as it goes on, month after month, even year after year, we don't see anything changing. It's easy to get discouraged and think, it's never going to happen. This is as good as it gets. I'll just learn to live with it. We all go through disappointments, setbacks, loss. Pain is a part of life. It's easy to get discouraged, even bitter, think, why is this happening to me? Sometimes we look at pieces in our lives that don't make sense. The key is what we do in our times of pain. Pain will change us. Heartache, loss, disappointments, they don't leave us the same. Every painful time, even though you don't like it, it's developing something in you that can only be developed in the tough times. Eventually, that will pass. You'll get through it, but you will be different. In those tough times, when you're uncomfortable, going through a loss, dealing with an illness, you could easily let it overwhelm you. Now, how the pain changes you is up to you. You can come out bitter, or you can come out better. You can come out defeated, giving up on your dreams, or you can come out with a new passion, a new fire excited about the new opportunities in front of me. I may not like it, but I'm not a whiner. I'm a warrior. I know I can handle this. Don't complain about the pain. Without the pain, we couldn't reach the fullness of our destinies. Sometimes we bring pain on ourselves. 
we made poor choices, get in a relationship we know is not good, or maybe get over our head in our spending. Now it's pain. We're having to deal with the consequences. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So take advantage of today. Take advantage of tomorrow. Take advantage of every opportunity that you have to do what you want in life. It's time to ignite the dream. It's time for you to stop settling for just money and really open your game up. Dreams require sacrifices. Like, my city's expensive. Move. My car payments are high. Sell your car and take the bus. This is dreams we're talking about. We're talking about dreams. All of us experience pain. My challenge, don't just go through it, grow through it. That difficulty is an opportunity to get stronger, to develop character, to gain new confidence. Anybody can give up. Anybody can let it overwhelm you. But you know what that's doing? Wasting your pain. That pain is not there to stop you. It's there to prepare you, to increase you, to develop you. Difficulties are a part of life. Now quit telling yourself you can't take it. You're not weak. You are well able. Eventually, the pain will pass. You'll give birth to new strength. Just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. And there will always be forces trying to convince us to settle where we are. Life has a way of pushing our dreams down. They can become buried under discouragement, buried under past mistakes. There are dreams buried under divorce, buried under low self-esteem. It's easy to settle for mediocrity, even though we have all this potential buried on the inside. What are you remembering? The hurt, the pain, what didn't work out? Turn it around and remember your dream. Have you allowed any dreams to get buried in you? At one time, you believed you could do something great. You believed you could lead the company in sales. You believed you could break that addiction. And it's been a long time had some bad breaks, it wasn't all your fault. You could easily settle where you are. Nobody would fault you. The enemy would love to deceive you into burying your dream, thinking that it's never gonna work out. Don't believe those lies. It's not too late to become all that you were created to be. Every time you remember your dream, you're removing some dirt. You're digging it back out. The true mark of a champion is even though some dirt gets thrown on your dream, instead of letting it get buried, you keep shaking it off. You keep moving forward. You've got to figure out what it is that actually makes you feel alive. And if you understand that the game that you're playing is actually a game of brain chemistry and that nothing else matters, there's no objective truth, there's no one path to glory, there's no one life for you to live. There's only the subjective truth, the thing inside you, that gut instinct that voice that whispers to you you've got to learn to trust that you've got to learn to trust it by building it up you've got to learn to trust it by taking actions and gut checking yourself and asking is that me is that who i want to be or is that somebody else cultural voice my parents my lover whatever trying to speak through me and as harley davidson said when writing the story of your life don't let anyone else hold the pen